Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC and today we have a special video, another safety video for you to watch. This is going to be great for you guys who charge lipos. Uh, most of us do, so this is the video to watch. This little guy right here can cause a lot of trouble for your house, your family, your garage. Uh, it can burn down your house. We've talked about this before and today we're going to show you something that you might not have seen before. There's a bunch of variations of it out there on the internet. We're going to show you our own version of it. Uh, also take heed to the disclaimer that we're not responsible for what you do with your lipos. Take this as uh, a grain of salt and a bit of advice for you getting into the hobby. If you're a new guy, definitely the thing to, to do is store your, your lipos in some type of fireproof ammo tin. We've talked about these before. Drill a hole in the side so you can get some good ventilation in there if there does happen to be a fire inside. So the biggest thing we want to talk about today and the theme of this video is the battery bunker. It's the LiPo battery bunker which houses the battery charger. We're going to put the power supply outside the bunker. We're going to show you how to set that up and we're going to do it all for under $10. So pretty cool. Stay tuned. Coming up next. Okay guys, we just got back from Home Depot and it's raining outside, so what a better day to go at Home Depot and go shopping. We did this all for under $10. We got four pieces of 24 inch tile that are 89 cents a piece and we got six center blocks for 99 cents a piece. So under $10, we're gonna build our battery bunker and then we're gonna be safe while we're charging our lipos. That's pretty cool. So before we get started, also I wanna talk about your fire extinguisher. You wanna have a fire extinguisher close by but not right on top of your charge station, obviously. Something that's gonna be a chemical class rating on this fire extinguisher. Make sure it can put out a lipo. Talk to your local fire department or a fire buddy of yours and find out if what the correct one is going to be, if the one you get is going to work. Um, now, as, after we went shopping, we also went in the pantry and grabbed a few Ziploc bags, probably wondering what that's for. We're going to fill these up with sand. We're going to keep them close by, um, usually off to the side about six or seven feet. So I can get to this if I need to grab one of these sandbags and dump the sand on top of the chemical fire. This should be the first thing that you go for to put out your lipo fire because sand is really good to stop lipo fires. Um, I'm not a fire expert, but I've seen it done. It does work. Now, the next thing we're going to put in our bunker is a smoke detector. This will let us know from far away. If I'm across the house, uh, if I'm doing something else in the house, I'm not going to leave the house when I charge lipos because you never want to do that. You never want to leave them unattended. But if you are, you know, across the other side of the house or you step outside for a second, you might hear this fire alarm and save your house uh, from going up in flames. So let's go ahead now, let's get started. Let's take the first few center blocks. We're gonna lay them out on the bench here and we're gonna make sure that uh, our tile fits correctly. Now, one thing I wanna mention is placement of your battery bunker. You wanna make sure that you choose a place in your house or garage that's gonna be away from anything wood. Like we talked about before, you don't wanna put it up against the wall or curtains or anything that could possibly catch fire. You wanna keep it away from anything that's, that's volatile. So we're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna lay out the bricks. We're gonna put the tile down and show you how it's done. Okay, so I have our tile laid out, and this is on the workbench right now, and this is just for demonstration purposes only, okay? N never do this on top of wood surface. You wanna do it on top of a metal surface like we talked about, shelving, or on a concrete floor in your garage, um, somewhere away from anything that could catch fire. So we're gonna use two pieces of tile here for this experiment. Um, you can use four on the bottom layer if you don't want any kind of edges hanging off, but you're gonna take your first center block and you're gonna Put it alongside here, just like so. And then you're gonna take a second one, and we're gonna put another one over here. We're gonna go all the way around the tile, and we're gonna create our little bunker that our charger is gonna go in, and then our batteries will sit in here during the charge process. Once we do that, we're gonna put a tile cover on the top of it, and then basically what we're gonna have is a fire 
almost fireproof safe. So this will keep it a lot safer than just charging it on the kitchen counter or on your, your uh, bench top in your garage. I had a friend of mine actually lose his whole garage, um, burnt down his whole garage, lost two four wheelers, a truck, and all of his airplanes, helis, and multi-rotors. So um, he lost everything he had. So you wanna be very, very careful charging lipos in your home. Uh, so let's go ahead now and let's grab the rest of those blocks and we'll go ahead and put the rest around the edge for you. Okay, you guys, now that we have laid out our six bricks, in a nice rectangular fashion and we've made sure that the bricks are nice and tight close together so there's not any big seams and we made sure that everything is all level from brick to brick nothing is really out of level so we're going to have a pretty good seal on the top of the battery bunker now the first thing we're going to do is like i said we're going to take the power supply whatever you're using to, to charge and, and, and keep the power coming to your charger you want to set that outside of the battery bunker so that gets plenty of air because there is a fan on the back of most power chargers or excuse me power supplies that will draw air and need to cool during the charging process so we're going to set that to the side we can go ahead and take the battery charger itself we have this nice hk quattro we can charge four batteries at once with this the leads can come out the top side um, I wouldn't do it in between the seams of the bricks. What I would do is run it out the top of the side um, on either side, the closest way you can get to your power supply. So this is gonna power the, the battery charger inside here. Gonna put your lipos down next to it in here. And once we have everything hooked up and turned on, we can take our other two pieces of tile and cover it up. And what I would do in this situation is I would leave the power charger, excuse me, the power supply over to the side like we said before. I wouldn't put anything on top of here um, due to the possibility of it catching on fire. If you have some flames come up around the sides or in between this seam, uh, you can also do this by covering up the whole piece, the whole top with a piece of hardy plank style concrete backing you can cut it to fit perfectly on the top of this and you won't have any seams um, but like I said this is for under ten dollars and this um, looks pretty nice to me and the area we're going to set it in will be completely safe for our battery charging a lot safer like I said than leaving it on the countertop uh, pretty cool that we can go ahead and not have to worry too much about our batteries charging I'm not going to go to the store and grab a sandwich or anything but I will definitely stay close by so this is the quickest way to do it for under $10. Up next, we're gonna show you another tip for your bench. Stay tuned. Okay guys, one more thing here. We picked up some Husky drawer liner while we were at Home Depot. And this is pretty cool because you can take this out and you can put it across your workbench. When you're working with screws and small things that you don't want to bounce off your bench, uh, once they hit the floor, you probably never find it again. So what I like to do normally is I lay down a towel over top of my workspace. This comes from the single rotor days when we used to take apart single rotor helicopters and we would have just bolts and parts and pieces everywhere. You don't want to lose even one screw because when you go to put it back together, that might be something, some critical screw. So uh, get yourself some of this from Home Depot. This was about nine or ten dollars. Um, well worth it because it'll go across the front of your bench or you can cut it to size if you have a smaller bench and you don't want it to go all the way across and you can save the rest of it for use with something else. But go ahead and just roll this out across your bench and this will create a nice workspace for you. And when you're working with those screws, it has a nice tacky top on it, a nice surface that stuff's not gonna bounce or go anywhere on you. And being a dark surface, it's a little easier to see those little tiny screws. So some of you guys are hard, hard, can't see very well, having a hard time seeing those small pieces and parts. You definitely won't lose it on this mat. So pretty nice and it feels pretty nice on my hands too. So excited to use this now on the bench. 
uh, here at Drone Camps. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you was an organizational type tip. I got tired of digging through my toolbox looking for my drivers. My drivers happen to be the things that I use the most. So if you're sitting on the bench and you need a certain size driver and it's somewhere in here and I'm actually I have a couple of these so I'm digging through two different ones um, sometimes looking for for one driver. So a quick way to alleviate this problem is go ahead and grab all your drivers, get yourself a nice mug and stick them tip up in, in your mug. That way when you go to look, they're all in one spot and you can look at the tip and see what, what size you need. So pretty easy, I usually use this uh, driver is my probably favorite right here. This fits all my 250s and, and actually most of my uh, aerial quads. So pretty cool, just another tip, another tip from Drone Camps. Thanks again for watching. Uh, see you for the final words. Okay guys, thanks again for watching Drone Camps RC YouTube channel. This has been a nice episode for us to show you some things that as new guys coming into the sport, just a few things that'll help you get started and make life just a little easier for you transitioning into this. We want you to know all about lifeboat safety. Um, very, very important to, to this sport and this hobby. So uh, be very careful with your lipos. And another the other thing is working on your bench. Have it nice and clean most of the time. I've seen some guys out there get pretty wild with their bench. You know, I mean, builds happen and we make messes, but have a little organization along the way will help you and save you a lot of frustration in the end from looking for a tool that you can't find or maybe that small little wire that you just misplaced somewhere uh, fell on the floor. So use a mat while you're working and keep your stuff organized. Until next time, I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. Please click subscribe.